we've got our transform running and that's good I guess um, but we need to evolve this a little bit for it to be useful to us so that's what we're going to do next and then uh, we're going to make our own custom entity if we've got time so up to this point the transform we wrote the script is pushing data into Maltigo and the problem with it is it's always does the same thing it always gives us the same result so let's set up some objects here We've got computer A, AA, BBB, CCC, and monkey. So the problem with our transform is it does exactly what we asked it to do, which is it creates these two objects. But regardless of what object I run it on, I'm always going to get the same result. Now, our script doesn't just have to return objects, it can sort of interact with the real world. So, with just going to update the script a little bit, um, I'm going to have it sort of query uh, the Python version. It's running, you know what I mean? Um, so it's going to interact with the, the world outside of Maltigo, which is a little bit more useful. Um, I could have this starting a service, stopping a service, deleting a file, installing software. But we're still back to the same problem, which is if I could get this to cooperate. Whenever I run it, it's running the same script, regardless of what object I'm running it from. And if that's all we can do that's not very useful to me. I want to be able to sort of interact with these objects dynamically. So let's look at how that happens. I'm going to make a new script. We're going to call it check arguments. So, as we mentioned before, when we are selecting the transform to run, what Maltigo is doing is it's constructing a command line with arguments and then running that. So what I'm doing here in Python is just through string handling, stepping through the arguments that were thrown on the command line, I'll enumerate those and then separate them into a dictionary so that I can sort of see the properties, see the arguments and their values. And that's all the script does. Any language will do this, it will just look a little bit different. Python, Ruby, PowerShell, Bash scripting, whatever you want to do, they each have their own sort of method for dealing with arguments, dealing with strings. Those details aren't germane to our Maltigo environment. So let's take that transform and make another one.
attach that to a phrase. And as we mentioned before in this block on the bottom here, it's going to run Python, check args.py, then it will feed the entity value, and then it will feed the different properties and their values. Now, if I run this here, let's see what our result is. The script, I should mention, I have it return a data object just to return something, and then it does the string handling. So I just have it printing out the arguments it's passed. So the first argument is the check args pi, we know that. The next argument is computer AAA, and then we can see the third argument it passes, text is equal to computer AAA. All right, that's interesting. Now let's run the same script. Check arguments, and then we look at our debug window, and we can see it passed the new computer name. Ah, that's interesting. So now, let's say our Python script is taking these arguments, in this case a computer name, now it can sort of use that information and do whatever you want with it. Let's say, go fetch a list of the installed packages, or open ports, or whatever you want so on and so forth. So check arguments, computer CCC. Check arguments on monkey. There you go. Although I don't think you'd want to enumerate ports on a monkey. But that goes without saying. Great. Let's um Actually, let's run that on something with more than one property, see what that looks like. All right, we've got two people now, John Doe and Tim Allen. Because the name was identical, the unique name was identical, it wasn't going to let me move forward, so I just changed it slightly. Everything looks good. Now we should have a transform connected to these people. So. I say check arguments. Check arguments. John Doe was the second argument passed in the command line. And then, as we can see on the third argument, I can see person.full name. We've got John Doe right here. First name is equal to John. Last name is equal to Doe. And then the script that the I wrote just sort of pushes that into a dictionary and now I can kind of look look them up by property just sort of a generic a generic thing this would turn into a function if you're going to be writing a program likewise if we run the same script on Tim Allen you can see that the data made it into our script and I'm able to sort of manipulate and handle that and do whatever I want with that information. Outstanding. Let's see if we can use that for something. So clean up some of this stuff.
create a few more people here. Let's use data. Outstanding. And this isn't going to do anything too interesting. Um, I'm going to create the multi-ego transform object just like we've seen. It's going to step through the arguments. I've removed all those printing lines that sort of gave us that information in the debug window. But what it will do is it will create two phrases and then add the first name to one and the last name to the other. And then it will finish its output. So that's our script. Let's create a new transform. Use data. I'm going to attach this to a person, which is important because the properties that I called out in the script are first name and last name, and that is specific to this entity. data. Look at that. Look at John Doe. Likewise, when I say use data, I'm just going to keep throwing it off the screen. Broke it up into Tim and Alan. I think it's just messing with me now. It works. There's Nick Antonizek. That's interesting. It recognized the relationship, the commonality between these two. Now, for names, that's sort of a, a silly thing and probably not very useful. But again, if I was enumerating services or software or something to that effect, all of a sudden you can use that information to sort of draw heat maps and, and use that to make sort of intuitive decisions with your information. All right, we're running a little long. We're almost at uh, 15 minutes, but really quickly, let's make our own sort of custom entity. Um, we've got a decent library of entities right here, but you can declare your own entity, make it look like however you want, and give it its own properties. And that's very easy. I'm going to click Entities here. Let's say Manage Entities. I'm going to create a new entity. I'm going to call it uh, Media. Media. We can select, it has a whole bunch of graphics built into it. We can even add our own. Let's do that. Throw this some pictures. So we give it a name, 
a display name, give it a unique name so that we can reference it. I'm not going to give it any inheritance. Well, that looks good. And we'll add it to the personal category. I think that's where our phrase is at anyway. God, we want to give it some properties, don't we? Give it a quick description, and then under additional properties here, let's say add a property, and I'm going to give it a property called URL. And there are data types in here, and I can give it as many properties as I want, but we'll just do a couple for demonstration purposes. Now, if you look under here, here's our media object. Zoom boy out. And as I look at the properties, media could be a song. There you go. That's how to make a custom entity. And we've made a couple custom transforms that both push data into Maltigo as well as accept data from Maltigo. Um, that's the end of this video. And then in the next video, we'll think of something semi-useful to sort of demonstrate all of this. Thanks.